Hey there everybody, my name is Derek, and I'm Bryce, and we're the Handbell Brothers. Today we're going to talk about practicing handbells without actually having handbells. Well, why is that important? It's useful in all kinds of situations. Derek and I are going to Redding, California to participate in a handbell festival. And while we're there, we're going to be participating in something called Ringing in the Red Zone with Larry Sue. Congratulations, Larry Sue, on getting married. As part of going to Reading, we have to try to play this piece of music. They can't read that from the camera. We have to try to play this piece of music, which is uh, by Larry Sue, called Rondo Loco, with Larry in under two hours of rehearsal time. Today, we figured we'd show you how we prepare our music before we go to a festival like this. Hambo ringers don't often think about how to prepare music before they get to rehearsal, but it's actually one of the most important things you could do as a handbell player. So we've come up with five steps to help you work through the process of how do you look at your music before you go to a festival. Step one is very easy. Get a paper copy of your music, like so. I find that having a paper copy of your music before you go to a festival actually helps a lot because then you can write all over it and you can look at it and really get to know your music before you actually get to a festival. Most festival coordinators or directors of your choirs will send out the music ahead of time before rehearsal. If they don't, you should ask for it. An important thing to remember if you mark your own music before the festival is to change your markings to the festival music with your stand partner. Step two is to listen to a recording of the piece. You can find recordings of most pieces online if you Google it with the composer's name. Many times there'll be recordings of handbell choirs performing it on YouTube. Other times you'll end up on the music publisher's site where you can actually listen to pre-recordings of the music. But either way, you need to find a recording of the music and listen to it multiple times before you get to a conference. That's insane. After you've listened to the song a few times, pick up your music and follow along. When you do that, you're looking for where your part fits in with the rest of the song. It's important to follow along with your music while you listen, because when you're with your ensemble, you can hear all the melody lines and where you fit in, but on your own, you need to be able to hear that. Also, I find it's helpful because I can look through my music and find bell changes that I think look possible, but then when I listen to the recording, the tempo makes them not possible at all. Here's one right here in measure 44 where I have the a to the G to the G sharp to the A all doubles. A to the G to the G sharp. All in octaves. I balls. How fast? Don't is it? know how I'm. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -ba -da, ba -da, ba One of the other things I always do when I'm looking at my music is um, step four, which is mark your music. Typically, with pieces like this, where I only have a couple hours with the director, I'll mark way more than I normally would when I'm back with my other group. Things I'd mark are all of my bell changes. Mark every single bell change. Even if you think it's an obvious bell change, it gets it into your head that, oh yes, I have a bell change here, I have a bell change here. Mark every single bell change. Also, if it takes you more than one or two passes to go over a rhythm, I'd recommend writing in the counting on that one measure. This is so that when you get to rehearsal, you can play all of your notes in the right spots, and the guest conductor can do what they were brought there to do, which is make it all musical. Should you mark dynamics then, or should you wait on dynamics and tempo changes? If the director sends you rehearsal notes before rehearsal, then you should obviously mark all those changes into your music. Otherwise, don't go too crazy on the dynamics and tempo until you get to rehearsal just to find out what exactly it is they have planned. Especially with a piece like this, where we'll actually have Larry Sue, who wrote the piece, conducting us on it. Who knows what he's going to do with it. Yeah, it's 7, 8, 9, 8. Mm-hmm. That keeps alternating back and forth. A good thing to do before you go to a festival is to mark any questions you have for the conductor, so that way you know what you're going to do when you get there and you sound intelligent. And impress Larry that we know our music. For instance, in this song, there's a couple measures that are written in 4-4, but are actually 7-8-9-8. Eight, eight. So it would be a good question to ask Larry when we get there if he's going to conduct them in 7-8-9-8 eight, eight or in 4-4. Four, four. One other thing I always do is mark all of my naturals and flats from, my, from the key signature. I wouldn't normally do that in choirs, but in festival situations, the last thing I want to do is pick up the wrong note. After you've gone through your music and you've listened to the recordings and you've marked everything, something I like to do to help me figure out how I'm going to get through some tricky spots is to pantomime... Really? Typically, I usually just pantomime with my hands, like this, but there are also lots of other things you can use to pantomime. The first being foam. We also need some things to pantomime with. Here are some things we would suggest if you don't like to pantomime without anything in your hands. Plastic bottles. Glass bottles. You can foreign hand them. Kitchen utensils. Holy spatula, Batman! If you're really desperate, cans of soup. Hey, and then you get lunch out of it, too. And lastly, you can use vegetables like zucchini. I bet you can't weave and take a bite every time. So hopefully this gives everybody some ideas on how you can prepare for festivals and rehearsals beforehand without having to own your own set of bells. If you want to find out more about what we talked about today, or about us, then check out our blog. The link is below. We'll be posting new videos and content every Wednesday. Also, if you have ideas for what you want us to talk about in the future, mention it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.